Hey everyone, Leo with Dreaming Tree and welcome to the assembly video for our retro TV gift box. It's exactly uh, how it sounds. It's a gift box um, featuring the front of, I guess it would be inspired by one of the more popular TVs in the 70s, which I think it was a Zenith. Uh, I don't remember the exact model, but uh, many people have this one in their home. So it'll bring back some memories and we've made it so that, well, this is just the prototype here. Um, we gave it color bars, uh, but it also includes a little template, which is this piece here, so that you can, for example, uh, maybe find a screenshot of your recipient's favorite show and do a print and cut um, in this shape and actually glue that in place of the bars. So that's a great way to customize it. Uh, but anyway, without further ado, let's pop into the assembly here. What we're going to do is begin by assembling the base or the container where our gift will ultimately go. And one thing to keep in mind here is that we have a series of labels to help you differentiate the various sections. And uh, well, for example, here, the actual container has a letter B on the tabs here, B for bottom. Okay, so you'll notice here we have B with a Roman numeral one under it. Here we have B with a Roman numeral two, that's the next piece. Then of course, B with a Roman numeral three, B with a four, and the four is a series of score marks in the shape of a square. Okay, so that's your fourth piece. Then we have this rectangular piece with a B, that's to put it, you're gonna put that on the bottom. And then we have a BL, that's bottom liner. Okay, I'll explain how that works in just a second. But just to get going here, we're gonna grab piece with the label B1. We'll actually apply glue to that tab. And then we're gonna take the piece with B2 on the tab and connect that to B1. Okay, so here is the tab with the B2. You want that over on the right. I'm gonna line this up, making sure that it's flush at the top and straight up and down, obviously. Give that a few seconds for its initial placement. You can fold it over on itself and check and make sure that these are flush at the top. If they are, go ahead and press down to really get that in place. Okay. And we have two sections joined together. And now we're gonna go over to the tab with B2, apply our glue. Then we're gonna take the section with the tab labeled B3 and connect it just like we did with the previous section. Okay, B3 is gonna be the longer side, or the longer section I should say. And just like we did the first time, just make sure that it's nice and flush at the top, just like that. Let it set initially, fold it over onto itself, check your alignment at the top. If it's nice and flush and straight, you know you did a good job, you can continue pushing down. Let that tab set. Okay, so three sections together. Now we're gonna take and apply glue to the tab with the B3 on it. Then we're gonna take section B4 and get that connected, just like we did. So put that down flat on your table, grab B4. The B4 tab is over there on the right-hand side. Get that connected, check your alignment at the top, should be nice and flush. But it right up to that little score mark there. Okay, and take it, fold it over onto itself, check your alignment here, and give it a little nudge up or down if you need to, then press down on the tab. Okay, there we go. Okay, so they're all connected and now we're just gonna join them together. We'll accomplish that by applying glue to the tab with the label B4. And spread that glue out. I like to spread it out to the very edge so everything is nice and seamless. And then because this is a box, it's symmetrical, which means you should be able to put this down flat, grab the other end, and just let it drop right into place. Let that 
get its initial hold. It will take and fold it over onto itself there. Check your alignment. Give that a press. Should sit completely flat with no issue. There we go. Okay. All right, so we have essentially a box. All right, now I'm gonna take those tabs, flip them in, and we're gonna grab the piece labeled B, B for bottom. I'm gonna apply some glue to just one of the tabs here so that we can get it anchored. And now, of course, I've got, been using a fresh bottle all day and it's finally starting to coagulate, which is okay. Whoops, it's okay. All right, let's take that glue, spread it out to the very edge. We're gonna take the piece labeled B and apply it to this tab, get it nice and centered right out to the very edge, like so, and then press down at the very edge here. We can drop it down and then press down on the rest of the tab to help the whole thing get good contact. You can also kind of push it down like this. I have a feeling that thing shifted on me. Let's see. Nope, looks good. And we'll flip it over this way, move that out of the way, and we'll apply glue to the remaining three tabs here. Let me clean off this nozzle real quick. That's good. And let's apply glue to the three remaining tabs. We'll spread that glue out and close this up. And that's how we form the container. This is where our gift is gonna, it's gonna sit and live. Okay, spread that out to the very edges. Like so. go. And then when we close this up, focus on aligning it with this side here first, the side opposite of the side that is already hinged. Get that nice and centered all the way out to the edge. And then the other two sides, you may need to kind of nudge some things in a little bit. Sometimes you have to, sometimes you don't. There we go. That usually works out pretty well. And then just continue applying a very gentle downward pressure around the seam where the bottom meets the edge and then we'll quickly flip it over and press down on the rest of the tab to help it really stay in place and we can go back and make sure that everything's sitting nice and flat and if you have any areas that maybe aren't making the best contact and grab a scrap piece of paper, just kind of shove it in there. I'll show you, I don't have any, but if you do, just take a scrap piece of paper, throw a little bit of glue right on the very corner and just slide it in between any little areas that maybe are not sitting perfect. And then just press and hold them down and that'll make it look nice and polished. Okay, and we can flip it over and then just throw a little bit of glue onto the tab area, a little bit on the inside, and take the piece labeled BL, pop it in there. That will help reinforce and hide those tabs, making it look nice inside. And there we go. Okay, so the container is done, and we can put that off to the side. <clears throat> and we're gonna actually repeat that process one more time here to construct the top, the actual TV portion, I'll show you here, this is the prototype. It's a separate piece that's gonna get glued to this. Instead of trying to make it all work as one, um, just devised it this way, just to make it easier on everybody. Uh, but similar to how we did the first one here, this has a T and a one. This is your T2. And we have a T3 and a T4, okay? And we're just gonna connect them just as we did 
but this time the tab is actually going to be on top. So let's begin by placing glue on the tab that has the T1 on it. Just like that. Put that down flat, grab your T2, line it up. And this time we're going to look on this side here, the bottom, to make sure that things are aligned correctly and flip it over onto itself. Make sure that it's aligned nicely and press down. Just like that. There we go. Okay. Now we can apply glue to tab T2. Like that. Spread that glue out. There we go. Grab piece with the tab labeled T3, the actual tab on top, line it up. There we go. <clears throat> Press that into place. Go ahead and fold it over onto itself. Check your alignment. That looks good. Press that down at the seam here where they will be connected the two sections. Okay, here we go. And now apply glue to the tab labeled T3. There we go. Spread that glue out all the way to the edge. Put that down on your surface. Grab the piece with the tab labeled T4. T4 should be on the right. Line it up. There we go. Go ahead and fold it over onto itself. Make sure that these are nice and flush. Press that down. Okay. And just like we did the first time, we're going to connect these together now. So we're going to put glue on the tab labeled T4. And spread that out. Just like that. And again, since it's symmetrical, you should be able to just pop it down into place like so. I'm going to take and fold it over onto itself. Press that down. Let that get a good hold. Okay, looks good. All right, so we have another box formed here. And pick a side, one of the longer sides preferably. And let's go ahead and apply our glue to the tab. And let's spread that glue out. We're gonna take the last rectangular piece and pop that right into place, like so. Again, making sure that you've got it all the way out to the edge and it's nice and centered, like that. Press that down. And then once the edge is secure, you can pop it down, press down in the remaining parts of the tab. You can also put it down flat like this. Okay, and let's move that out of the way. Bring these tabs in, apply your glue, and we'll close it up. And for the most part, let's say 80% of the structure is now complete. Oops. Okay, oops, spread that glue out. To the very edge. It's nice and wet, so we'll have ample time to spread the glue out and get it closed up. Again, focus on getting it aligned on this side first. Nice and centered, all the way out to the edge. Hold that down. And then check your two other sides. Might need to nudge the walls in a little bit and that's totally fine. Make sure it's making good contact throughout and flip her over, press down on the rest of the tabs. 
and then we'll flip it back over and continue checking our seams, making sure everything is nice and seamless as it'll help the rest of the assembly process. And I have a good size gap over here on this side. I don't know if you can see it. There it is. So again, this is where grabbing a piece of scrap paper, throwing a little bit of glue on there, and then just tucking it in between that little area and painting a little bit of glue on either the upper half or the bottom half, and then taking it and pressing it down will help us get that nice clean seam. And there we go. Okay. So as you can see here, this is going to be, this should fit on there perfectly. And there we have a nice box. And now it's just a matter of making the TV element and then putting some panels on it. So we're going to do that next. Okay. So we're going to begin putting together the main part of the TV here. And first thing you're going to want to do is grab this section here. And we're gonna glue a few tabs together. I'm gonna to start off with these little triangular tabs here. So go ahead and put a little bit of glue right on this little triangular tab. I'm gonna use my finger to spread it out nice and even and tuck that behind the adjacent wall and just hold that in place for a few moments. There we go. And we can move on over to the other one here, same thing. There we go. And just tuck that one in. And go easy on the glue. The less you use, the less time you'll spend waiting for it to dry. Should be nice and thin. Almost, should almost be able to see the color underneath it kind of coming through a little bit. Shouldn't see a layer of white ob obstructing or obscuring the, the color underneath. It's a nice thin layer. That's all you need. Okay. And the last one here, nice and thin, spread it out, especially out to the very edge and tuck that in. I had a little too much there. That's okay. I'll just wipe it off. But as you'll see, I'm going to be waiting a little bit longer for things to set. I'm just squeezing a little extra, a little extra pressure. Okay. So now that we have that, I'm going to move these tabs out of the way because we need access to this structure inside because we're going to be gluing some things to the structure. All right. So let's start off with this piece here. It's kind of funky shaped. What I want you to do, is grab a nice thick dowel and right in this corner, just kind of push that dowel in there to give it a little bit of a bend. Okay. We need to kind of shape it a little bit. We're training it just so it gets used to kind of curving right there. Uh, it doesn't have to be mathematically precise. Just as long as we kind of loosen those fibers in there, we'll be in good shape. So next what we want to do is we're going to take and apply some glue to this little tab here at the end of one of the sides and bring that glue in, spread it onto the entire tab, grab the other end of this and connect it. Make sure it's nice and straight, nice and lined up. Okay. And this part should be dipping in. Okay. It's going to give it a nice dimensional look. Okay. And of course you want to go around and fold all of the tabs, probably do that before, um, before you get to this part here. And now this section here that's connected. Okay. The TV is going to be like this with the main part of the TV here on the left and our little control and uh, the speaker is going to be on the right. So you want this part at the top. Okay. So essentially what's going to happen is, we're going to do is these tabs here, the top tabs on top are going to get glued to the outside. Okay. And then the tabs on the bottom 
these tabs can actually come in because we're gonna take and glue this piece to this section here inside. Okay, so it may be a good idea. Honestly, it doesn't really matter which way we do it. I think that getting it anchored to the frame first may be a good idea. These are gonna come in like so. And that's gonna create the surface for our uh, color bars. So upon doing some research about, cause I was born in 82, so I don't really know much about, I don't really know much about the 70s. All right, so let's flip this over and we'll apply some glue to this tab. You don't need to spread it out or anything. It's more just, uh, just to anchor it. I mean, I'll spread it out a little bit. And don't forget to keep this part with the seam at the top. Just drop that in and then we'll move it around a little bit until it looks nice and centered. Okay, so we actually want this right about there. Okay, you can stick your finger in there to help press that down. And now I'm just looking at the rest of it, looking at the rest of the tabs and my glue dried out because I was going too slow. Try that one more time. Try to get that as centered as you can. That looks good. I can take and just kind of press it into place like this. I'm using my middle finger underneath to push that into place. Try to keep it as even as possible. See a tiny little border there. Okay, then we'll go over to the opposite side and we'll get this tab glued into place making sure that that stays nice and centered as well. The score line here should meet up with this edge here, okay? So it should be, if you look at it from this side, you can see how they line up like that. Okay, and it actually, it might be easier to do this looking at it this way, at least just to make sure that you have it in the right spot. Okay, so let's go ahead and flip this down and let's apply our glue to this tab here. Once we get these two in, it'll stay nice and anchored for us, making the rest of it pretty easy. Okay, and again, kind of nudge that in a little bit. I'm gonna push that down. Just make sure that I've got it nice and centered. There we go. That looks pretty good. Keep pressing that down. And don't worry if you get a little bit of glue on the surface here, that's all gonna be covered up with a series of overlays. So it's not a huge deal, okay? All right, so these two sides are in place now. And what we can do is work our way up onto these tabs here. Okay, so let's get these two tabs at the top glued into place. You can do one at a time if you want. I think I'm just gonna put glue on both of them. Just a little bit. Again, it's mostly just to anchor it. Stick one of your fingers underneath. And again, make sure that right where that score line is meets up with that little cutout. Okay, there we go. Just like that. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so now we'll go over to the other side. It's a little bit different. I feel like every week if we bring you something that's a little bit different and keep challenging you, it will keep things interesting for everybody. This is definitely something different. Okay, let's fold those tabs over, pop them right into place. Can take a look from the inside just to make sure that you're matching it up right along that seam, right along where the score line is. There we go. 
And there we go. Okay, so all four sides are in place now, which just leaves these little spiky guys on the corners. So we can start pretty much anywhere. I'm gonna start on this side here. And I'm just gonna do a little dot on all four of these. And then we just fold them over. And again, don't worry too much. You can actually flip this over and just push down from the inside. Like that. And you can see those tabs sitting nicely. And we'll go over here. Apply glue to these tabs. Fold them down, flip this over, push down from the inside. There we go. And they, of course, didn't all make good contact yet. Kind of rushed it. There we go. And moving on, we've got eight more to go. There's four here. And this is probably the most challenging part of the project. So once we get through this, we'll be good. Okay, fold those down so that when you push down from the inside, helps make contact with this. Okay, there you go. That one needs a little extra love. So does that one. There we go. Okay. And that just leaves these four here. Let's flare these out so we can apply our glue. Thin that glue out a little bit, push them down almost up against the surface. Flip that over and then push down from the inside to help those tabs make contact. There we go. Let's take a look. And there we go. Okay, so that little beveled area is pretty much done now. And next, I'm going to take and glue this to the inside like so. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually start here just feels the easiest. Don't get any glue on that surface there. Just be careful as you spread it out. That's why I'm gonna flip it this way so I can try to avoid doing that. Throw a little bit of glue on that guy there and get this nice and centered in there. Hold it on the other side too. And then with your hand kind of through that area there, press that tab into place, making sure it's nice and centered there. There we go. Okay, you can flip that out very gently and apply our glue to the other tab here, this one here, nice and easy. And drop that into place, make sure it's nice and centered right up to that score mark and press that into place and then we'll just work from the inside to get the rest of this to hold. Okay, you really can't push it down on your surface here. It's kind of floating in limbo. But you can see the rest of it as we glue it. It'll kind of give the impression of a tube. Okay, so now we're gonna go over to these larger tabs here. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this one here. Throw a little bit of glue on that. And then push that down and take a look at it from the front just to make sure that it's sitting nice and flush. Give that a quick press. Okay, there you go. Just like that. And then let's go over to, let's go over to this side here. Throw a little bit of glue on that one. Push that up against it. And you will need to kind of push in a little bit just to make sure that it's in the right spot. Don't crease it too much. Just very gently press it into place. Even if you do crease it, we've got the color bars that are gonna go over this and they'll hide any little imperfections that may have resulted, but that's fine. Now we can go down to these last two here, nice and easy, and fold them over and give that a little press. 
the second one. Let's take a look at that. Awesome. Yeah, that looks great. Nice and seamless. Okay, let's head over here to the top now. Maybe that's the bottom. I don't know. Fold that over. Press that into place. Make sure it's nice and centered. At this point, it really shouldn't move too much. There we go. And let's go over here to this one. Throw a little glue on there. Fold it down. Take a look at it from this side. Might need to push it in just a tad. There we go. That's working nicely. And then just like we did when we were gluing the, uh, the section to the frame, we'll work on the little triangles last. And then we've got the two ones in the middle. I put glue on both of them at the same time. Press those down and into place. And voila. Okay. Yeah, I mean, technically, that's holding it very well at this point. I don't know if we really need to glue these down, but I'm going to because it'll kind of help keep it look consistent throughout. Okay, so let's just do a little bit of glue on all four of these. Flip those down. And kind of doing can pretty much fit them all in one finger. There we go. Look at that. Perfect. Okay. And we'll go over here to these four. Stab those a little bit. Flip them down. I like to take a look at it from the other side. You can feel when they're making contact. You don't even have to see it but you can look at it from this side too, that's fine. There we go. Wasn't sure how that was gonna work, but it worked very well. Kudos to Diana for this interesting design that is working out flawlessly. Okay, so I've got the glue on the four tabs there. We'll push those into place. And a little bit of glue squirt out there, but that's okay. If you would have told me that we could create a bevel like that with paper, I would have told you, I don't know about that, but we did it. Okay, there we go, the last four. Flip those down and push those into place. Okay, so next we have the little control panel and this is gonna bevel out Okay, so what we need to do is you need to fold in first like this, and then these tabs you're gonna fold out because we're gonna use these tabs to attach this to the inside like this. Okay, so this is actually gonna stick out like so once we get it all assembled. But before we do that, we need to create the little knobs. So they're made out of these little circles. And there's four circles with little holes in them. Two of them have a little L on them. L is for liner, okay? And then this is gonna be the top. So we need one with an L, one without an L. It's a little bit bigger. And then this piece with all the teeth. And there's two of them. So we wanna make two piles like that. And what we're gonna do here is take this and you'll see that there's a little triangular tab on one end. We're gonna take this and put some glue on that tab and we're gonna connect it to the other end of this piece, essentially forming a little circle. Okay, you can see we did that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and flip some of these down on one side, like so. Make sure they're nice and flat. And I'm just gonna use a, actually a dowel won't help there. I thought maybe it would. Just need to fold those down. It's kind of small, so there's gonna be a little bit of resistance, especially if you're doing it in black. And then we're gonna take this piece with an L, we're gonna pop it in there, and that's gonna help us create a nice circular shape with these. Make sure those teeth are not getting in the way as you pop it in. And don't push it all the way in. You want, you want it to uh, 
sit inside there with all the teeth under it. I'm just gonna move these out of the way a little bit more. Okay, so I'm just taking the L piece, popping it in there, and just give it a little firm little push. Don't break it. And there you can see how it immediately turned it into a nice solid circle. Okay, let's push that down all the way as far as it'll go. This is where the dowel will come in handy. Okay, and now it's just a matter of taking and gluing the tabs to the surface of that little L piece. So just do a few little dots, tuck it in, put it down on your surface, and then just press down. You can do it with a dowel, that's fine. Okay, so we've got two done. And what I'm gonna do is actually go over to the other, other side and do those two. We're gonna kinda of do it in a, a sort of a cross formation. Fold those down and then press those down. Make sure they're making good contact. Okay, and then we'll go over here, about 90 degrees over to the right. Fold those down and then press those into place. There we go. And then we'll go over here, opposite side of where we just were. A couple little dots of glue, spread them out nice and thin. Fold them under, press down. There we go. And that just leaves, I've got couple here. So do those two. Just keep your eye on the ones that you put glue on so you, you're not wasting your time pushing down on tabs that aren't even, they don't even need glue. I've got a single guy here. And actually, why don't we just get this all done in one shot here. We've got five tabs left. We'll fold those back. Put that down on your surface and then just use your dowel in a circular motion to press down very gently. And there you go. All those tabs are now in place. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this through, and now these tabs, the ones that remain here, are gonna get glued to the inside of this structure, like so, okay? And you can see how it's popping out. Eventually what we'll do is cover this up with this piece and we can do that now or later. It doesn't really make a difference. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and apply glue to just a handful of tabs here. We'll just do two at a time. Fold that over and then press that into place. And you really can't put this on your surface right now. Actually, yeah, you can. Take that back, it's still flat. So you can do that. You can use a little dowel to help you get that tab into place. So I got these two in place. I'm gonna go opposite of those two Whoops, way too much glue there. So dab some of that off. Fold those down. Make sure they're on the surface. There they are. And then we'll go over here to these two. Again, cross formation. It just helps distribute uh, the glue. Well, it doesn't distribute the glue. It just makes sure that we don't end up with a tight spot by kind of going crisscross like this. Okay, there's another one there. Fold that over, and press that into place. And then once we have that little crisp, that little cross formation done, the rest of these tabs, we can flip them over and I think we can just put glue on all of them and just do them all in one fell swoop. These are just kind of reinforcements here. Okay, let's go around in a circle. And if we have any strays that didn't want to sit, we can fix those now. Okay, and then finally, this is the piece that does not have the L on it. We're just gonna glue this right on top of this section here. So go ahead and apply some glue, especially out towards the perimeter. And I'm just gonna spread that glue out to the very edge of this thing. This piece is a little bit bigger than it needs to be, just so that in case we goofed up, it still looks nice and pretty. And then there's gonna be another piece that goes over it, so you don't need to worry about it.
Okay. All right, so that was fun, and we get to do it again. <laughs> All right, so we've got this guy here. Again, place a little bit of glue on the triangular tab, connect it to the opposite side, make sure you get it nice and centered, butted right up to that little score mark, and press and hold. Okay. And then pick a side, flatten the tabs out, on the other side, pull them out away from the inside so that we can get that little liner piece in there nicely. There we go. All right, find the piece with the L, this guy right here. Pop it in there. It'll again help shape this piece nicely. Make sure these tabs are nice and flat. You can use your dowel now to kind of pop it in there as far as it'll go. There we go. And then grab two next to each other. You could probably do three if you want. There's two, fold them back down and press down. You could try to do it with your finger. I feel like the dowel gets all of that surface area a lot quicker. I'm gonna go over to the opposite side, two little dots, fold it back, press down. Okay, and then we'll go over here, about 90 degrees over to either direction. Little dot, fold it in. There we go. And that missed, it's okay. And then we'll go over here, opposite side. Couple dots, fold it down and press. Okay, all right, so again, uh, this time I think one of them just didn't glue down, so we have a handful of tabs here. I think last time it was five, or maybe it was six, and this time it's seven, no big deal. Go ahead and apply your glue to the remaining tabs. Fold them down, make sure they're tucked under, and press those into place. And there we go, beautiful. <clears throat> All right, so just like we did, you can flare these tabs out now. And we're gonna pop it right through this little hole. We're gonna glue this to the inside of this structure. And same thing, we'll start with two tabs on any side, pick a side. Make sure it's laid flat. And just use your dowel to press that down. Got it, opposite of that side, we'll go over to the other side and fold that flat, lay it out, press that down. Then we'll go 90 degrees over, fold that down, press down. Now we got the hang of it. And then opposite of that side, let's just do these three. Two, three, fold those down, make sure they're tucked under and press. Okay, and that just leaves a handful here. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so I was right. I sent it a six. There we go. One more there, tuck those over and under and press that down. Nice and easy. Okay, so those are in place. Very nice. Okay, we can put this little topper on now. Got a nice amount of glue, so we can take it and really spread it out to the edge. Throw a little in the center for good measure. Just line up that little hole in the center. There we go. Okay. All right, well done, well done. Now, while we have this flat, uh, we can actually take this piece and we're gonna slide this right over, okay? And that's gonna get glued down like so. Okay, so let's pull that back and we'll apply our glue and then get that glued down
Okay, on this little grill here, try to get a little bit of glue on the grills, like so. A little bit right there. And just pop that right into place. There we go. It should pretty much naturally fall into place based on the fact that there's specific holes there so that this fits over the buttons. Okay. And you could probably get your dowel in there. There we go. Okay. Take a look, make sure everything's sitting nice and flush, and it is. Okay. Now the actual button part will do last. Uh, in the meantime, we can go ahead and put some of our wood elements in place here. You'll notice that we have a set of markers here and here to help you with this thick part. This is the, the thickest of these little wooden pieces. Okay, so look for that little marker there to help you with the placement. You should have an even border on the top and left and right. We're gonna put a few buttons on here as well. We'll do that last. Okay, then we have a series of little strips like these. These are all the same size, so it doesn't matter which one you grab. And they're going to essentially um, surround the little grill cutouts here. So I'm actually gonna start in the center of two of the cutouts. Just make sure you get it nice and centered and just glue that into place. Okay, so I got one, two, three more between the cutouts. Should leave one there and one there for the top and bottom. Okay, go easy on the glue here. We don't want it spilling out, especially because this paper that we're gluing it to is, uh, it's a black paper. I don't know if that's a pearlescent no, it's not. It's just AC black. So just be careful because um, if you spill or any, any glue gets onto the black, it will dry transparent, but it always leaves kind of a, a little glossy sheen. So make sure you dab that, dab that strip with your finger so you don't get a ton of glue all over the place. Okay, got a few more here. That one's gonna go right here. Okay, we've got two left. One for the top, one for the bottom. Okay, this one's gonna go right here. You want it flush with the cutout, the top part of, or the bottom of the cutout section, and then this one's gonna go right up here. Okay, that looks cool. Whoops, just trying to dab some glue off there. Rip the whole thing off. There we go. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so now <clears throat> we'll go ahead and assemble this to make it dimensional. You'll notice that on the corners here, there's a tiny little triangular tab. So let's go ahead and put some glue on one of the tabs, just one at a time. And we're going to tuck that tab behind the adjacent dimensional wall. I'm just going to hold, press and hold until it's a small little area, so you don't want to let go of that prematurely. Give that some time to really set. That worked out pretty nice. And we'll go over here. We've got another triangular tab. Just give that one little dot. Maybe thin it out if you got too much. Slide it back behind the adjacent wall here. Line it up and press and hold. Should be enough surface area for your fingers to grab. Okay, I'll just keep holding that. There we go. And don't let up too soon, especially if you overdid it on the glue. Give it a few extra seconds. Okay, now we'll head over here to the next little triangular tab. Just a little dot of glue. Line it up, match up the edge of this wall 
with the little score mark there and hold. <clears throat> and finally, got one little guy left here. And same thing, tuck that in, press that tab up against the inside of the adjacent section and hold that in place. There we go. Okay, and that was not quite ready. So anyway, um, so that's almost done. And uh, yeah, we're really getting close to the end here. I know this uh, is actually not the most difficult project. And this little area here, kind of jumped the gun on that a little bit by letting it go too soon. So I'm gonna go back in, just paint a little extra glue in there and just give that a few extra seconds to set all the way out to the edge. <clears throat> okay. All right, so again, TV is gonna be over on the left-hand side. The control panel, where our buttons are, are gonna be on the right with the speaker grill at the bottom. Okay, so this is gonna come out like this. I'm gonna pop this in, and you can see how it's sort of raised a little bit. That's ultimately what we're going for. So what we can do is flare these tabs out of the way. Just these three, I think, is plenty. Okay. So we've got these tabs out of the way, and we are going to have to kind of do this in midair, so to speak, because we can't put it down flat. But as you can see, this is kind of what the end result needs to look like. And I'm gonna do the top and bottom first with these smaller little tabs, because that'll help us get it nice and centered. So go ahead and pull back this tab here. Okay, let's throw a little bit of glue on here, nice and thin. Pop this in there. And it will definitely help to look at it from the front just to make sure that it's all the way out. I'm holding that tab that we just put glue on and I'm pressing it up against the inside. I'll show you here in a second. Just want to make sure that it's nice and centered. There we go. That looks good. Okay, so you can see that tab is now glued to this structure here. And it's making really good contact, that's what we want. So we'll go over to the bottom now, and you can see here's the other tab. Apply some glue to that, nice and thin. Fold that down so that it goes up against the inside on the bottom. And just press that into place. It's okay if you kinda warp it a little bit while it's while trying to get it in place. Not a big deal. Let's take a look. It's making good contact. Okay. All right, so that just leaves the two long sides now. So let's flip back the tab here on this side. Like so. See that long tab there? And we'll apply glue to that whole tab. Don't need to make sure that it's all the way out to the edge. That's not important right now. It's, it's, what's important is just making sure that you have glue on there and that you're able to press that up against the inside and that it's making some form of contact. And look at it from here. And that looks good. I don't think that's going anywhere. So you can see what that looks like from the outside. Now, last one. Bring that tab in so we can apply glue to it. Okay, fold it back. Press it up against the surface here. I'm just looking at it from this side to make sure everything looks nice and aligned and even. And I can flip it back over and just make sure that it's all making good contact. And there we go. Okay, looking good. Let's take a look here. 
that our structure looks good. I noticed here that kind of came apart a little bit, so I'm going to fix that. Throw a little bit of glue on a scrap piece of paper. Just kind of paint it in there. And we'll press and hold that down for a few extra seconds. Okay, so now we're just going to close up the back of this and we'll put the buttons on last, especially the ones that require little brads because I actually made them so you can move them and twist them and turn them, which we didn't have to do, but still kind of cool. All right, so flip this over. Now we've got this little guy here. Okay, and we're gonna get this glued into place. So pick a long side, doesn't matter if it's top or bottom, and apply some glue to this long tab. And let's spread that glue out to the edge. Okay, got a little bit on my fingers, but that's okay. All right, now we're gonna anchor this piece down. Don't push down too hard because it's not flat on the other side here but make sure this is out to the edge and nice and centered. It's gonna be pretty important that we have this done accurately for the next step. So don't rush. Okay, and we can flare this out, press down on the remaining parts of the tab so that it really gets a good grip. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, clear that out. Okay, now we'll go ahead and apply glue to the remaining three tabs. Be kind of generous with this glue here because we are gonna be spreading it out and we need a little extra time to do that. So the thicker the glue, the longer you have before it starts to get tacky and set. Okay, there I can already feel that's getting kind of tacky. But sometimes as you're doing this, you end up with a little excess glue from one side. You can definitely bring it over and kind of share it with another tab. Okay, bring this down and you might need to kind of pull on it a little bit to get that centered. Just kind of nudge the walls in or out as needed. Just make sure that it is as flush with the perimeter as possible to this shape. Okay, there we go. And you can actually on some sides, get your fingers in there, actually on most sides, to kind of help the rest of the tab make better contact. Okay, just continue kind of running your, gliding your finger along the perimeter. There we go. We have some overlays to kind of polish up the front here. And as you can see, we got this guy here. It's gonna cover everything up nicely. It's gonna go on like that. So let's do that. Now, if you want to break this up into two sections, you can. This is flimsy enough to where we can peel it back and do that. So I'll show you how to do that here. Let's just do this section first, maybe throw a little bit here and here. Okay. So you can lay this down like so, and then very gently and carefully pop that over our little control panel, press it down, make sure it's flush with the outside of this whole thing here. And then make sure that it's making good contact all the way. Check this side too and make sure that that looks nice and even. Okay, press that into place. And then we can go around and if there's any area that isn't making good contact, we can, we can clean that up, it's not a big deal. Okay, we'll take a look at that, see how that looks. Okay, I have a gap there at the top. I'm gonna fix that. Throw a little glue on a scrap piece of paper. And just paint that glue up there, like so. 
going to go ahead and press that down. Make sure it's nice and seamless. There we go. Looks good. Okay, so now as I mentioned, this part's kind of flimsy. And you can see here, we can kind of pull it out and apply glue to the rest of it. Like so. Just go easy on the glue. All the way in there. We could always clean that up too. Okay, just drop it. And because we had it lined up correctly on that on that other side, the rest of it should just naturally sort of fall into place. Okay, run your finger around the perimeter. Make sure it's nice and flush with the perimeter of the brown structure. And just kind of continue working your finger around. Make sure there's no gaps anywhere. Good. Now I have a little bit of a gap here. So I'm going to take my scrap piece and when you do this, make sure you lift it up a little bit so that you don't accidentally get glue on parts that don't need it. I had a little bit pop out and it's okay. Don't worry about it. Not a huge deal. There we go. Okay, so now that part's nice and flush. Look around, make sure everything is nice and seamless. I have a little, little gap here. I'll clean that up. Throw a little extra glue there, press that down, give that a little, a little extra TLC. And there we go. Okay. That looks great. All right, next, got this piece. And this piece is going to go around the entire perimeter as well. It's going to leave a little bit of that black showing on the inside. Okay, so we can kind of do that the same way we did where we do it in stages, or you can just do it all in one fell swoop. I'll show you that both are possible. Okay, so let's go ahead and... Now the reason, one of the main reasons that you would want to do this in steps is because when you're dealing with little flimsy pieces like this, where one section is super flimsy, sometimes you end up making a mess, okay? Because it's flimsy and you, you don't really have really good control over it. It may end up touching a surface that you don't want it to touch. And that is my biggest concern when doing something like this. So I'm gonna hold it here. I'm gonna focus on this side first, kind of feel the edge. Okay, and that actually worked out just fine. Grab this edge here, make sure the corners match and are nice and flush. Press that down into place. Okay, check your seams all the way around. Make sure everything is making good contact. And that worked out just fine. So just takes a little extra, a little extra care when you're doing things like that where just kind of putting it all down in one shot. And I've got a little gap up there, that's okay. Just grab your scrap, throw a little bit of glue on there, tuck it behind, paint a little glue in there, and then just a little extra love. And it'll look nice and seamless, which is what we want. Okay, there we go. So that looks sharp, and then finally, Got one more layer to really give it that 70s look. And so I had to recut this piece because it seems that the machine miscut it for some reason. There's like a little wavy area there. Um, so with this, because again, this is pretty flimsy, I am going to break this down into two sections. I'm gonna glue down this smaller section first and then just kind of lift up the other section and get that glued down. I don't wanna risk uh, blemishing the project because everything is kind of a dark color. So I'll just throw a little bit of glue 
on just this little section. And I'm going to do it this way. I know this is upside down. It's okay. I'm going to hold it right here. And this is going to be, it's going to be flush with the perimeter. So I just want to drop it as close to the perimeter as I can on the top and bottom. It's going to leave a little bit of a border. Sorry, I'm just kind of in deep thought here. There we go. There's a little bit of a border here and it will maintain around the rest of the TV. Just make sure that this part is nice and flush. Okay, I'll flip that down and I'm gonna to try to get glue on as much of the surface as I can and any little areas that I cannot get glue on, I will just paint with some glue using my little technique. Like I said, I just want to make sure that I don't blemish the dark parts of this project. Just throw a little bit of glue on there and any areas where there's way too much, just dab that with your finger, thin it out nicely to avoid any blemishing. There we go. Okay, and then this should pretty much drop into place, but just to avoid the potential of a catastrophe there. Just guide it into place manually. There we go, perfect. Okay, and like I said, I didn't get a lot of glue right towards this area here, but that's not a problem because with a little scrap piece of paper and a little bit of glue, and we'll just pop that right under there. And glue that right into place. There we go. Just make sure it's nice and flush with the top. You might have to look at it from a different angles. Sometimes, because it's so reflective, it's kind of hard to see the layer behind it. So check from different angles. Use your fingers. Use whatever means you have to to make sure that it's sitting nice and flush. And there we go. Now that is starting to really take shape here. And I um, guess we could we can put the little uh, uh, little color bars in place here. I'll show you uh, if you are following along with the colors that we selected here. I'll put these in order, and you notice that they're not flat. They kind of uh, contour this shape here. So you want to make sure that you are following that contour and that you have them laid out correctly. Okay, it's gonna go like this, like that. Okay, so that's how the little puzzle goes together. And this one here, it's gonna get glued right in there, like so. So let's go ahead and flip this over, get some glue on here, nice and thin. You don't need a lot. You don't want it showing through the paper. And then when you get this aligned in here, just make sure that it's going right up to the very edge of that, that black piece. And it's matching up with that as closely as possible. So again, and on this, on these color bars, um, if you got the bundle, can use the little captions that came with the uh, the hippie van or the hippie bus. You can use those to add a sentiment to this or make your own. And maybe, just maybe, we might come up with some bonus sentiments for this. I think that could be a cool idea. Okay, so this one here, you want to butt that up against the previous piece, make sure that it's aligned correctly. There we go. Putting together our little color bars. There we go. Next one, our green. Easy on the glue. And this definitely gives that that splash of color. And for some reason, for me anyway, and I'm sure this resonates with a lot of people. Color bars are 
uh, I don't know, I associate them with the 70s for some reason. Again, back to what I was saying about how after, what, 2 a.m., they kind of stopped broadcasting things, and it was just either static or color bars. So definitely, I'm not sure when that stopped, but it was really cool. We need more of the national anthem, too. I love how they played the national anthem before going to blackout. So for those of you that are sometimes like me, I try not to do it as much these days, but if, you, if you're falling asleep to the TV back in the day, you always knew what time it was roughly when that national anthem came on. Okay. I think that was a scene in uh, one of those horror flicks. Maybe it was Poltergeist. Maybe that's where I learned about that, actually, being the Halloween connoisseur that I am. Okay, so there's that. And then finally, our blue last one here. We'll put the little buttons in place, too, for the little dials. There we go. There's our last one. Just like a little puzzle piece. Put it right in there. And there's our cool little color bars. Looks awesome. Okay, all right, so now let's put some little buttons together, and then the rest of this is just pretty straightforward stuff. Just gluing some panels in place, really. All right, so we've got two buttons here, and what we're going to do is you'll notice that each of these has one of these little guys, okay, with the little slits, and that's where the actual dial is going to go or the little handle part of the dial, I should say. So let's just start by gluing this little disc-shaped thing onto the black piece. I'll just do a series of little dots here. It's a pretty small piece, don't need a ton of glue on it. Just match up the slits, the hole in the center, and the other slit, just like that. Okay, and we'll do the same with the other one. I think both of these buttons are the same size. They are. Both buttons are the same size, except one has a ring that is a little bit thicker, and the other one has a ring that's a little bit thinner. Okay, so let's match that up. Get that matched up. There we go. Okay, so let's grab, I'm grabbing the thicker ring here. And just doing little dots around the perimeter. Dab that a little bit if you need to, and that's going to go right on the outside, like so. Pop that into place, and then let's grab the one with the thinner ring. And same thing here, just doing a series of little dots. And this is where the brads are going to come into place. You'll notice that we have brads on the supply list. We're using brads to kind of connect this to the structure so that it can rotate and act like a, a real live dial. I'd love to see somebody actually make this thing work. That would be, that'd be something, I think. Okay, so uh, first things first here, uh, where the heck did my brads go? Here we go. Uh, we have a few other little buttons that we need to assemble as well. Okay, so what we need to do here is we need to actually put this brad in first. Okay, and then this guy here, you'll notice that, and actually go ahead and just take, just for now, so that, just sep spread the, uh, the backs of these out so this thing doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't matter what color it is. You're not going to see the brad. So take this thing, and you're going to fold it here, just like this. Okay, I'm just going to show you here, and these little tabs are going to go in here. And those are actually going to get glued to the inside or the back side of this little guy. So we'll slide both of the tabs in there. You can see them on the back here. And we'll take and just put a little dot of glue on each of these and press that down. And then go over to the other side. And just a tiny little dot of glue there and press that up against the inside. So that essentially creates your little, little handle on the knob. Okay, 
And then you can take this, make sure you don't lose it. And we're gonna feed that through the little slit there, or the little hole. And then pull it through the other side. And just separate those out. Kind of helps to hold the brad in place a little bit. And there you go. So you can see this thing will actually twist. A nice little, cute little touch, I guess. All right, let's get our other little brad in place. Pop that through before we put this guy in. Feed it through both of the slits. There we go. And let me spread this part so I don't lose it. There we go. And then let's glue each of these tabs over onto the inside. Hold that in place for a moment. And then I'll just do the other one while I'm holding this. There we go. Give that a few seconds. All right, and then you can kind of push down on this a little bit to hold the brad in place. So you can pull this back, bring those little guys back together, slide them through. Just keep holding that down and then go ahead and flare those out on the inside. And there is your other one, okay? So there we go. Kind of funky, kind of cool. Okay, and then we have two more little sets of buttons here. It's just two large circles, two small circles. We're gonna take and glue the small circle to the top of the large circle. And then if you want, you can take uh, like a little foam square and foam square this out to give it a little dimension. Obviously there's no way we would make a dimensional button that small, that would just be torture for everybody involved. So we're just kind of improvising here, doing a little layering and then using a foam square. That saves a lot of headache. It still adds to it. Okay, so these two little buttons here, you'll notice right here and right here are a series of little markers to help you with the placement. So let's see here. I'm gonna grab my scissors. And I'm gonna cut one of these, and it's already cut in half. I'm gonna cut it in half again. So I have a tiny little foam square. And pop that right on the back, fits perfectly. Peel off the backing. And you can see where that little marker is. Pop that right there. Get it nice and centered. We'll do the same thing with the last one there. Then the face of this thing is pretty much done. And all we need to do is kind of connect it to the box and then just add some panels and this thing's pretty much done. There we go. Okay, pretty cool, man. Groovy, all right. <clears throat> okay, so all these panels are gonna go on last. Now remember, this black part is the main container. This part here, the brown, you'll see that the brown fits over the black. So what we're gonna do now, is we're gonna take this and we're gonna glue this to the brown, like this. We just wanna make sure that we keep everything nice and flush. Okay, because then we have some panels that we need to put on the top and the side and the back. And I'm gonna actually leave this in like this so I can use the, the black part, the, the actual container, as sort of a, uh, just kind of to keep it nice and sturdy while we, while we work on this, okay? <clears throat> so we can flip this over and obviously what we're gonna need to do is apply glue to this entire back section here, whoops. That was way too much. No one's gonna see it anyway. Of course, my glue bottle is acting up now. 
Okay, and we're gonna be spreading this glue out nice and thin throughout, all the way out to the very edge. Okay, so let's start doing that. I want this to be as flush as possible. All the way out to the edge, all the way around. Okay, and let's just make sure that we get this on right side up. Okay, it doesn't matter which side is the front. This is the top. Okay, and the TV needs to go like this. So pop that right on there. Make sure it's nice and centered on the face of this. Take a look and make sure it's flush all the way or get it as centered as possible. I think that looks good. There we go. Okay, I'm just kind of keep pushing it all the way around. And now here, I'm gonna pull this out because I can't really get any leverage in here. And press that up against the TV. Okay, that looks pretty good. There's gonna be a little bit of, well, I wouldn't call it a gap. That's actually fine because we kind of factored that in to this and that looks pretty much perfect. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're just gonna take this and, and glue these panels onto the top and the two sides. Okay, so let's do that. And I don't wanna cake this with too much glue. I'm gonna focus most of it around the perimeter, nice and thin. And if I have, end up with any gaps, I'll go through and just kind of clean it up using my little method. I don't want to get this paper too wet. Okay, focus on getting it lined up with the front. I'm actually focusing on the back. So do as I, do as I do, not as I say sometimes is how I feel, but that's okay. It fits on there perfectly. Just keep kind of going around the perimeter. We will clean up any little gaps we may end up with. Not a big deal. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna just actually start checking for any gaps right now. I've got, got a little gap right there. So I'll just take my scrap piece of paper and throw a little glue on there, tuck it in between the two layers that need to make contact, and then just press that down and hold. No big deal. Check my back. I've got a little area here. Just gonna put a little bit on the corner because that full side probably wouldn't fit in there. Looks good. That side's got a little gap, that's okay. Go right in the corner there. Come on, there we go. I just paint that, press it down. That looks awesome. Oops, I just pulled that back on accident. Let's fix that up real quick. Okay, that looks so cool. It's like, what the heck did we just make? How cool is that? Got a little area here up in the front that needs a little extra love. There we go. Cool. All right, so that just leaves two side panels and you can see how these are gonna go in. I may end up going through and I, I hit these with ink already but to blend this, the, the corners together even more, I might just go through and just really kind of go, go nuts with the ink a little bit, just to give it a, a nice vintage -y look and just blend it in more. I mean, I'm happy with how it looks now, but 
think it could look a little more distressed. I'd love to get my hands on one of these old TVs just to see what it would do. Actually, I don't think you can even watch anything on these TVs anymore because everything over the air is now, I think it's all digital now, I'm pretty sure. All right, so with the side panel here, just make sure that it's flush with the bottom. Okay, and then you want it to, for the most part, be flush with the front. Okay, you can put this down on your surface and press down from inside to kind of help that make contact. And then, again, such a large piece that it may just be a good idea to kind of go through and check your seams if you have any gaps. Just take a minute and do the little painting method that I was just showing you here. Okay, so we got that one in place and now we just need to do one more side on the other side. Okay, so you can see here, we've got the two sections meeting perfectly right here. And again, I might hit that with a little bit of ink just to blend it even more. But as it stands, it looks pretty darn good. So that just leaves this side here. Okay, and again, as you're putting this on, just make sure it's flush with the back and the bottom. And then the rest of it should just naturally fall into place. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our glue going. And then we just have that back panel to put on. And we've got uh, a few little details on the back to make it look kind of realistic. And, um, but more or less, it's just, uh, just kind of reinforce it, make it a little more sturdy. Okay, so pop this down again, flush with the back and the bottom is what you're aiming for here, especially the bottom. There we go. And then the front will naturally just kind of fall into place. But again, just make sure that that back is nice and flush. Pop that down on your surface, press down from the inside, just to kind of avoid destroying anything. Make sure that front is sitting nice and flush. And again, I will go through and just kind of check my seams, make sure everything is nice and crisp. I've got some gaps there. And that is par for the course when you're dealing with a lot of surface area like this. So don't, don't be hard on yourself. Just if you can get this all done in one fell swoop without any gaps, then I, I applaud you. I've been doing this for a long time and I just know how occasionally you'll, you'll get it. If all the stars align, but most of the time it just takes a little extra, a little extra TLC as they say. Okay, here we have a tiny little gap there. there we go, just press that into place. Okay. And my bottom looks good. Got a little gap in the back. And then, like I said, there's just one more panel on the back. It's pretty self-explanatory, so I mean, you could pretty much probably end transmission, listen to the uh, national anthem, and then just uh, <laughs> go to sleep. Just kidding. Okay, so as far as this goes, um, this little guy here, you've got two grills that are at the top and then there's going to be one on the bottom you want this flush with the bottom okay so it's going to go on like that and then this piece here just glue both of these together and you can use a little foam square to pop that on there uh, again i'm not even sure what that does but again we tried to keep this as authentic as possible uh, as far as the, the Zenith television goes from back in the day. So for anyone that receives this and takes a look at it, they'll be like, man, I remember that. What a cool little blast from the past. So that's really, it's more nostalgia than anything. Okay, so don't forget this is going to go like this and centered. So you have an even border on both sides. And flush at the bottom 
That looks about right. Press that into place. You can take it and put it down on your surface like this. Also kind of reinforces the back as well. There we go. Well, that turned out nice. And then finally, we've got these two little pieces. Let's get our glue on one of them. Glue it to the other one. I'll we'll grab a few little foam squares. Now, if you really want to jazz this up, you can figure out how to put an antenna on it. Um, we didn't build one because I thought it would be kind of difficult to build an antenna out of paper um, to make it look real. So you guys can improvise if you want. Okay, so this guy here is going to go right. You can see where the little score marks are to help you with the placement. And I've got a few little gaps back here that I'm going to clean up off camera. No need for you guys to watch me doing that. But as you can see here, um, there's the main part of this is going to go over the structure like so. And then you've got kind of a, a, little, uh, a little stand for this thing. So it kind of stands like that. And there is your super cool retro TV. That's going to do it. Uh, like I said, I'm going to hit this with a little bit of ink along the edges here to blend that a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a good size. You could definitely fit a, a good size gift in here and that's going to do it. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please visit us on our YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button while you're there. Hit the little bell so you get notifications anytime we release a new product, whether it be paid or free. And if you make this or anything from our latest That 70s Bundle, I'd love to see it, and so would the rest of our community. So head over to your Facebook and do a search for Dreaming Tree Official. That's where you'll find myself and over 40,000 other dreamers that inspire us daily. So thank you again for hanging out with me. And as always, I look forward to crafting with you again. Hey, thanks for crafting along with me. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some of our other videos. And also, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget to visit our site and check out our free SVG section where we have over 140 free SVG files complete with assembly videos. I look forward to crafting with you soon.